I'll be totally honest with you, before this watch, I was never really a fan of the Navi Timer. And if you're looking to get some great history facts from me, sorry, this book is all I've got. Now if you've come around to see some great footage of the new Breitling Navi Timer, you might have come to the right spot. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom, some of you might know me as Bowl of Salmon on Instagram. Today we're gonna have a talk about the new Breitling Navitimer collection. The Navitimer is almost synonym with the Breitling name and is undoubtedly one of the most iconic and recognizable models in the watch world. But Breitling has never been on my list of brands I keep an eye on much. My preconceptions? Sizes that make me wish I got at least three times the wrist size. Dials that look more busy than JFK on a holiday. And also, I'm not old enough to be owning a Breitling. So why a video on the Navi Timer? It was only after I had been able to see and try this out on the wrist at my local AD that I fell head over heels with this model. So I started reading up a bit on the history of the Navi Timer and I just felt like making a new video about it. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a minute to thank Van Outerham Time and Jewelry for letting me spend some time with this piece. Here is some quick b-roll I whipped together on a visit to their store. This year Breitling released the updated 2022 Navitimer collection with a wide range of models both in size and color. Maybe the introduction of the fresh looking ice blue or mint green shows best that the brand is trying to tap into a younger audience. And even if the classic reversed panda is my favorite of the bunch, it is the silver dial with the hues of champagne that caught my eye, because it best shows how all the changes that have been made make for a cleaner looking dial design. Let's have a look at some specifications first. The diameter of this watch is 41 mm. Breitling also released versions in 43 and 46 mm. The lug to lug of this watch is 47 mm and the lug width 22 mm. The height of this watch is 13.6 mm. For reference, the Black Bay Pro is 14.7 and the Speedy is 14 mm. So for chronograph standards, this is a pretty good height. Now visually, if we look at the profile of the watch, the Navi Timer looks like a much bigger piece, but that is because of how the case flanks are shaped. The watches have a 3 bar water resistance, so it can take some light rain and a splash of water, but maybe it isn't the best idea to go swimming with it. For the first time we see the Breitling 01 Manufacture inside a 41mm Navi Timer case, and we get to enjoy that movement because of the sapphire case back. Now let's have a look at all the subtle changes. That busy looking edge of the watch with the abundance of numbers is actually called the slide rule. It allows pilots to calculate average speed, distance traveled, fuel consumption, rate of ascent and loads more. And if you want to learn more on how the slide rule works, I've linked an excellent video on the topic in the description below. The change that has the biggest impact in slimming the dial down is that instead of the slide rule having a steep ramp near the edges, it is now flattened. There is a gentle curve running from the center of the dial to the edge now. Thanks to the recessed subdials, the dial doesn't look flat at all. On this version, the slide rule has been cleaned up by dropping the tachymeter scale and the hour scale. If you compare this model to the classic 806, dropping down those numerals help to further open up the dial. The edge of the bezel looks a bit less aggressive now and the domed sapphire crystal now sits flush with that bezel. All these changes make the silhouette of the watch look more compact. The applied aircraft owners and pilot association logo at the 12 o'clock is stunning. Underneath we find the printed words Breitling and 1884. And at the 6 o'clock position we find the printed word Navitimer to balance out the watch. I admit that the passing of that B logo on the chrono hand would have made for an epic macro shot, but removing it also takes away some of those elements that made the whole layout feel too heavy. 
The date window has been moved from the 4 o'clock position and is now hiding nicely inside the 12 hour subdial. The hands, the indices and the applied logo all have this rose gold finish that looks absolutely gorgeous when the light hits it. Breitling describes this dial as a silver color, but it is the combination of champagne hues and gold accents that make this watch look so elegant. These models are absolutely stunning. Perhaps a lot of purists won't agree with me, but try to see this as a fish that is new to the brand. I think Breitling is doing great things lately, and a lot of my prejudice about them just went out the window. I would love to be adding this one to the watch box. A model so famous as the Navitimer certainly sits well in any collection. But at this point, there are just some others that I hope to add first. Maybe when they do a 41mm reversed panda. There are a lot more changes that Breitling made that I haven't even touched upon yet, but I'm curious to know what you think of the new collection. Do let me know in the comments or come find me on Instagram. As always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.